Moore. 27-year-old Dan Markington died by his own hand after being placed without consent into an AstraZeneca clinical trial of three powerful neuroleptic drugs. On December 13, 2006, four-year-old Rebecca Riley took her last breath as heavy doses of Depakote, Seroquel, and Clonidine coursed through her veins, filling her lungs with fluid and shutting down her heart. On January 5th of this year, 18-year-old Keith Vidal, who was said to be having a so-called schizophrenic episode, was tased, pinned down, and shot to death by a police officer who allegedly declared, we don't have time for this. And for over a year, 15-year-old Justina Pelletier has been a psychiatric prisoner of the state of Massachusetts, separated from her family, her friends, and her home, her every breath and action and uttered word controlled by this powerful, violent, dehumanizing mechanism of social control deceptively called psychiatry. This from a, this massive building of people in here. We are here today for these individuals and for the millions of fellow Americans who've lost their identities, their freedoms, their sexuality, their physical health, their minds, and their lives to psychiatry for the many who died 25 years early because of the damage caused from psychiatric drugs, for the youth of our country whose natural, healthy human experiences have been turned into symptoms to be drugged indefinitely, robbing them of their right to, to grow up fully human. We are here today because we are the lucky ones to be free, free to have and to use our voices, to, use our, to own our bodies, to be in this fresh air, free to be human again after being so dehumanized by you, psychiatry, your pockets bulging with profits reaped from our human fears and pain. You, psychiatry, a master exploiter of suffering, a pill hustler, a preacher of false promises. You, psychiatry, slave master of the human experience. At the heart of this dystopian age of psychiatric pharmaceutical control is the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual a book of degradation and dehumanization and psychiatry's most effective enslavement apparatus. A slave is, quote, a person who is the legal property of another and is forced to obey them. Justina Pelletier and so many others are currently locked against their will on psych wards and in so-called group homes, clinical strangers, their indefinite masters, determining what chemicals are to be put in their bodies, whether they'll have custody of their children or be allowed to work or see friends or attend school, and when they'll be able to be able to breathe fresh air again. Psychiatrists call these human beings their patients for whom they so-called care. We call them psychiatric slaves, for this is what they are. Our founding fathers declared that we are all equal and that we are all endowed with the unalienable, unalienable right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And that when these rights are denied by our government, quote, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute new government laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness, end quote. Yeah. To be a free thinking, free feeling, free believing American today is to be at risk of government sanctioned psychiatric imprisonment. We are not safe in our minds and our bodies. We are far from it. Are we not called by our duty as citizens to listen to our declaration and to fight for all that our founding fathers fought for? Are we not? Yeah. Our government is but a pawn of psychiatry. Our politicians' campaigns padded by the pharmaceutical and so-called mental health industries. Yeah. The psychiatric pharmaceutical industrial complex has a lobby almost $100 million greater than any other in our country. And our elected leaders, like Representative Tim Murphy, are fighting hard to pass bills that will strip American citizens of their bas basic rights in the name of so-called mental health. Bills they claim are for the greater good, but that are truly for the benefit of those who stand to profit from the psychiatrization of our fellows. It's time to rise up and take back our humanity. It is time. We must start by naming psychiatry for the many things that it is a political manipulator, a force of social and behavioral control disguised behind a facade of medical authority, a government-supported perpetrator of civil and human rights violations, a chemical rapist declaring, this is for your own good, as it guides a syringe or pill bottle to its unwilling victim. Yeah. 
The DSM has now reached into nearly every facet of our humanity in the name of a phantom normal. The slow creep of psychiatry's influence over the last century, now deep within our homes, our schools, our foster system, our nursing homes, our prisons, and our workplaces. It has seeped into the courtroom, its skill as supreme scaremonger, altering the course of justice by manipulating words like safety, risk, and care, so that judges no longer privilege individual liberty over the tyranny of force. Psychiatry uses the media to fuel our fear of difference, of emotional suffering, and of our capacity as human beings for violence and self-destruction, as Aubrey so articulately spoke about. Indeed, it's taught us to forget what it means to be human. Perhaps most catastrophic of all is the impact we can't see, the devastation that resides within us, for psychiatry has slinked into our most sacred corners of self, our minds, where we house everything about how we define ourselves and what we value and what we want and how we want to live in the world. To this we say, no more! No more! No more! No more! No more! It is time to fight back, to push this master out, to expose it for what it is, and to bring down its tyrannous throne, where it sits with a self-satisfied smile, petting the head of the government crouched before it. It is time for us, as a collective human family, to shed the chains of psychiatric oppression and reclaim ourselves. For you, psychiatry, have power only because we've given it to you. We, the people, can and will take it away. No matter how many generations of protest and organizing and determined activism it takes. And as you convene across the street from us, strategizing about how best to spread your medical model propaganda and keep us passive, compliant, dependent, afraid, and asleep, our voices are growing ever louder, our spirits more invigorated, our message of psychiatric liberation reaching more and more of those enslaved by you. We know you are afraid. We sense it growing in your greedy belly, and we see it in the way you desperately try to, pr try to prove yourself valid. We know that one day, however far into the future it may be, the last faces you'll see before you fall into extinction will be the ones of those of us who've survived you. Our cheeks lit up by the light of a bonfire of burning DSMs. These human beings whose spirits could never be touched by you, no matter how hard you tried. That day will come. It's already on its way. Here's the human rights for all!